Ladies and gentlemen, we are live this morning. I'm five minutes before 10. Uh, just going to get you caught up to speed with what's going on. And we're going to be ready to rock today, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely, freaking lutely ready to rock. So as you guys know, today, uh, this morning with this live, we're going to have, we are going to have Francesco on. I got my boy Stefano, Mr. Mr. Didier Deschamps here and we're going to be uh doing a good live and we're going to be discussing with francesco Ayo. what up what up what's going on guys i'm switching my son to academy cool let's go let's go let's go let's go come on we're gonna have a good show this morning uh we're gonna be learning a lot we're gonna be getting in and talking about a bunch of stuff so we again i'm just trying to educate man and i and i do need to see i made a mistake um and i need to fix it uh i need to move uh the two lives one i did with nick and one i did with uh, Kai and his dad last night or yesterday. I need to move them. They're in the wrong spot. I'm trying to fix it. We might have to redo it. So that's my fault. I made a mistake and uh, we'll be adjusting that. So that's my fault. Last thing I have my, um, oh, I didn't tell you what breed the cash cow is. The breed of the cash cow? That breed is dollar bills, baby. Dollar bills, dollar bills, dollar bills. That's what that thing is. Kevin, what's up, man? I got to get you in for a live as well, bro. We got to chat and just start blowing this thing up. So uh, let's do it. That's 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 what it's about. And uh, here, here's the thing, bro. Like, again, why am I doing this? Because it's it's so important that you guys are so, that you guys need to be educated about what this is actually about. And you guys don't know. And that's the problem. So let me invite Francesco in and we're going to talk about it. Give me one second. Hold on. So just a little bit. About dollars. Big dollars. <laughs> Kevin, I'll shoot you a DM and then we can figure it out all day. Good morning. Hey, my dog. Good much. Good morning. What up? So, yeah, so guys, this is Francesco, and uh, he's a 20-year-old, a uh, ton of experience. As I mentioned in the in the live, or not the live, in, in the story, he's going uh, big time D1, um, which is a great achievement for him. And uh, he's a lot of experience that I want him to kind of share about. And we're going to be discussing a lot of things. And, of course, if you guys got questions, man, throw it in here because that's what we're here for. And hopefully, you know, again, to help educate people about what this is like and what the real world of football looks like. So, Francesco, why don't you just kind of introduce yourself a little bit and so people can get kind of a background of who you are, what you do, why um, you do it. My name's Jess Cariello. I'm 20 years old. I played five years in Italy from when I was 15 to 20 years old. And just – the love of soccer came from my family, from my grandfather, from my father, and it's just been a, a part of my life the entire, my entire life. So, yeah. And he, he didn't oh, say yeah. it. He was he was with uh, Orlando City with Orlando City B, and he trained with the yeah, first twice team what, twice a week. week, two or three, three times a week. So again, guy with a lot of experience. So um, I, I want to start this conversation off in a different way, uh, and it really starts with like. How important is individual training? Is pretty important because if you don't have the base of technique and touching and passing and just your own yeah. your own idea, your own style of playing, you don't you can't really yeah. perform yeah. as well on the pitch because you gotta have your own right. base of fundamentals that you prove yourself. Right. That makes sense. It makes a difference. So the question I, I want to ask you, because I have this conversation. I mean, you saw me having meetings with parents the other day, and they're always asking, like, oh, I want, I want to see, like, tactics with the kids and stuff. And, and my argument is, okay, you know, you bring me kids that can dribble a ball, they can control a ball, they can pass yeah. with both feet, and they can yeah. receive with both feet. Then we can do tactics. Mm -hmm. But until the kids have that, it's almost impossible. So – you know, in the really the question is how important is it to have a group of players that can all play versus you mean with the other players side? that can't do that? Well, like, yeah, you have to have exactly. players, like you said, that know how to do stuff with both feet and have a good touch and have a good pass because you can do all the movements you want, but if they're not able to execute it, there's no – the tactics are just <laughs> – Exactly. It becomes irrelevant. Yeah, it becomes irrelevant. It's funny, man. So – can you kind of talk about maybe like when you were in Italy, like the positions that you played, yeah. or like when you went to Orlando City well, and when I went, kind of touch base on like the Italy, I went to the left to a right wing where I played for one season. Yeah. Then when I went to Rome, 
I went as, as a right or left wing, but then moved me to striker for a couple games. Then they moved me to yeah. left back and right back and right wing back and left wing back in a 3-5-2. So I right. not that I didn't right. know it. I was just in, in not as used to it. I had to learn all the whole defensive side about playing as a winger yeah. because and I, I would always play right. up. So whenever I did right wing back or left wing back or left back mm -hmm. or right back, I had to learn. I knew the, the, attack, the attacking part. Mm -hmm. I had to learn the defensive part and the shape and everything. So that, that, that brought a lot of experience mm -hmm. and improvement to my game. Then it had me play as, um, yeah. as midfielder too, as an eight or as a six and as a 10. That also being in the middle of the field yeah. also helped me with my control and my decision making because it's more more people in the middle rather than on the wing. So. Yeah. Well, what about when you play, went to Orlando City? Uh, striker. I went as a winger, but they've had, they had they moved me to striker, and, and at times with the first team, yeah. they would put me as midfielder too if, if they needed, and that brought my level up even more because. Players that have played, obviously, like when I was there, there was Pato still. So players that have played in Champions League, yeah. that have played in Europe, players that are physical, strong, fast, technical. It's a whole different speed. Yeah. Yeah. Whole different ball game, huh? Yeah. Well, and, and let me let me ask you this question. Do you think if you didn't have the level that you had, like technically, would you have been no. able to play with Pato and with those guys? Because no, the best second I controlled the ball, if I didn't wasn't able to control it well enough to keep it close to me, I wouldn't be able to do anything. I'd lose the ball immediately because they don't jump on you immediately. They wait for that moment that you take the slightest of heavy touch, the slightest of miscontrol, and they just and they and they pounce on you. If you have your control under control and know what you're and only know what you're doing, if you want to if you want to call it, they kind of watch you like you see in games on tv the defenders never really jump in they wait till you mess up so when you get you have your your control Boom. they don't won't jump in yeah. unless you control perfectly but then, then you look like you don't know what you're doing then they'll jump in yeah and it's interesting because one thing i want to touch base on because honestly i've been getting mm -hmm. a lot of hate for this and it's juggling can you give the story about when you were in Italy oh, and you had to do that touch, the, yeah. the touch game and how that oh, went? Every, every yeah. practice before practice started, the whole team would get into a group or we would split into two groups. And you had, it was a two-touch game for 30 minutes. You had to, you couldn't use your thigh or your only chest and foot. And if you lost the ball, if you dropped me the ball, dropped three times, you had either a slap in the neck or a flick in the ear, which kind of, powered my whole improvement of touch thing because my touch was good but i never really played two touch here so it wasn't the greatest yeah but just mm -hmm. that after i got smacked in the neck so many times there was a just the thing that kind of clicked inside me that I wanted that I was like okay i need to improve my touch to be able to compete with these guys and to be able to play and to be able to yeah. move forward so. right it's funny, man, because uh, people over here really devalue the the importance of juggling. And I'm like, what what I tell people is when, when kids – or one of the first things I do with juggling is yeah. you can see right away if a kid has level. It's, it's huge. And, you know, around the world you see exercises of guys juggling and stuff. Like I had a mm -hmm. friend of mine send me a video from yeah. Africa, and there's kids juggling barefoot, all one touch. And I'm like, but here we go in the USA, we say no. But it's just – it's funny, man. It's just – it's not what you would think it is. So, and back and back to Italy. Can you kind of touch on like, you know, was it a worthwhile experience? Is there a, is there a level gap between the U.S. youth to Italy and what you were experiencing? Like, For what, youth, can you kind of touch base on that. There is like a level gap because, like you said, they work. They're already in a way technically. Obviously, they're technical yeah. players in the in the U.S., but there's more technically sound players, even if they're not the best technically, because basically how you saying when they were little in the in Italy they go through all technical stuff dribbling yeah. passing control before they move to the big field and play before they do any tactics but I have my I have my little cousins right. that are playing over there and I watch their practices they have a bunch of cones set up there's no like I said no possession there's just technique until yeah. 
until they get to about 13, 14. My older cousin is starting to do tactical stuff now. And, um, but it's just a whole different, different setup. They do, they do, uh, um, well, ball game different. They, they do physical training twi- uh, twice a week too, even in the academy. Then when you get to the to the adult leagues, yeah. you do less technical stuff and a lot more possession and tactical, like you said, because at a certain point they say, yeah. okay, you need to have already this stuff. We're not going to teach it to you. You need to, if you have it, we'll take you. If you don't, we're not going to take you. And uh, ciao. So, yeah. but <laughs> I'd say between men's teams. I'd say there's not so much of a gap because here in men's teams, they do some, most, most pro teams do tactics over there and semi-pro and pro they do, they do tactics. I just say the, what's the word? The quality of the tactics and the quality of the understanding and the players and the coaches is a little bit, greater because over there they grew up with it maybe some coaches here learned about it and are trying to like get into it but over there there are a lot more coaches with usa now having more coaches that used to play but when when you used to play it's a whole different story because you've been in there you know what you know what's going on you know how to you understand you know how to break down a four three five two with a different formation yeah right well, and, 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 you know, adding that point, it, it relates back to parents, right? So, like, if, if parents have never – and let, let's not even just use football. Let's just use life. If you've never been yeah. successful in life, like at a high level, and you're just an average parent, you're not going to understand, like, the dedication and sacrifice. And this is what I kind of want you to talk about next is, like, you know, yeah. you're very physically fit. You're very strong. You're, you're built. You, you, did, yeah. you did that over years, so it's like, can you kind of talk about like your your gym regimen and well, what you do? When I was, in, on a when I was in Italy, I would uh, I was with my grandparents, so I would I had a set of weights at my house. Do before practice, yeah. I'd be at home. I do upper body with the weights twice a week, and I do a little bit lower body too on my own, not too much to stress my like my body out because I was still uh, yeah. physical training with the team one twice a week. And but that would be about yep. three to four times a week. Then when I went away from my grandparents, I had um, I would either if I had uh, the access to a gym, I'd go to a gym like I did in Florence. The personal trainer was also uh, at the at the gym, so she the personal trainer let us go with her whenever who was whoever was staying there whoever wanted to go, and she and she would um, mm-hmm. control all our stuff, so we went, wasn't doing too much. If she knew one person needed more of this, she got that a little bit. But when I was by myself, I would go to the fields see, an hour, hour 15 earlier, to do some upper body, some core, some lower body with the player, and then go out for actual team right. training. Now I'll go to the gym four times a week with a gym that I have that's close to here with uh, all personal trainers, certified personal trainers. They do, they have a, they have programs based on sports. So it's not only soccer, football, they have baseball. Yeah. yeah then, then, and what they, all one players. thing that they do tell me is, which I do most of, uh, almost every day at home, I foam roll, stretch, mm-hmm. drink a lot of water, fuel your body with the right food. Me as an Italian, I have a bunch of pasta, which fuels my body. So I have that, Every day at lunch, pasta. Yeah. So, and I have a bunch of fruit. Yeah, and and that you know, I was gonna ask that next question. Like, what what is your diet look like? Meal, so I like have a typical breakfast meal. in the morning with some oatmeal and then some Greek yogurt. Then around mm-hmm. ten thirty, eleven, or which is normally after I either finish training with you or I finish the gym, I'll have a banana and a protein yeah. bar, and then. Around one thirty, two o'clock, I'll be at my dad's restaurant and I'll eat a uh, plate of pasta with some fruit, with some fruit, whatever I find at the restaurant: blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. Then around five ish, five thirty, I'll have another thing of fruit, whatever I find in my fridge. And then dinner with some sort of, with chicken, turkey, um, eggs, whatever, some sort of protein with vegetables and salad, and the fruit after. Yeah. <laughs> what? 
So very, very healthy eating. How often do you eat fast food? How often do you eat fast food? Once every two to three years. <laughs> that's just because <laughs> that's just because of my father's <laughs> restaurant. I grew up with my father cooking, so I always have stuff yeah. at the restaurant. It's but every once in a while I'll go out with a friend or two, but and have something. But yeah, it's ever since it was one when I was little. It, I after I used to eat a lot of uh, fast food and it messed up my body. And ever since just completely completely changed yeah. my entire mentality of how I ate and took care of my body. Right. Man, that's funny. So then uh, let me ask you this question. And, and you kind of, well, I guess it's not really a question. I kind of want to conversate more about it because you mentioned it mm -hmm. and it's more of the recovery process. So like, um, yeah, you talked about foam rolling. You talked about stretching. How important it, is that to recovery? It's important and why? to recovery because it, it helps relax your muscles. Like I'll even in the winter, if my pool pool's cold, I'll uh, I'll jump, I'll put my legs in a in a cold pool because it helps helps release all your muscles. It helps you just honestly to me, it, feel, it makes me feel a whole lot better because I just if I don't do it, I just feel very tight and very sore. So it helps reduce for me. It helps yeah. reduce soreness. I have a, I have a, a massage gun that whenever I feel one place extra sore, I'll I'll use that. So it's to me, it's, it, helps, it helps me a lot because it helps relax my muscles, not be feel worse. So the next week, I can just face it the best way I could, I can. Well, and, and the thing that I, I want to add to this, and it's a testament to you and what you've been able to do, and the level you've been able to get to, is because, and, yeah. and I made a reel about this. You're either all in or you're all out. You're either doing the, all the right things or you're not. So like. You can train hard, but if you're not taking care of your body yeah. post training or pre training, I mean, you're just setting yourself yeah. up to fail. Yeah. It makes uh, it makes a huge difference. So yeah. let's talk about the uh, the college process now, because yeah. obviously you were at Orlando City, um, that didn't work out in your favor, unfortunately. I, I do think you have the level to be a professional, um, and and you're trying to find the pathway has been hard, but luckily, uh, or fortunately, I shouldn't say luckily, fortunately, you've been able to yeah. find your path into Division One. Can you talk about kind of how you got scouted, what that looked like, um, and yeah. then I can add some pieces, well, obviously, because I know the story. So. I was I was contacting uh, colleges, just emails. I applied to colleges yeah. academically, and then reached out to colleges, just to to the coaches to see if there was any possibilities of them of things they saw me. Yeah, and like you're saying, you know the story. You had a uh, Stephen Murray who came over from Ireland with a group to play with year yep. who ha this happens a lot a lot of people a lot of people think it doesn't really happen but it happens more times than most a friend of the coach was at the game that we played against Stetson and was it funny enough yep. scouting a goalkeeper and saw me mm -hmm. playing striker and came up to me after the game well during the game sent a message to his friend and the coach of, Cal of the school and he uh and he came up to me after saying that there was a possible school interested in me if I was willing to learn more about it and if I was willing to give them my information so we, I could get put in contact with, with the coach. And I said, I said yes and took off from there. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it's, you know, you touched on it a little bit, but I think it's really important for people to understand. So um, yeah. because everybody thinks that they're going to get scouted and they just mm -hmm. show up somewhere they're going to get scouted. So in your case, it's very, 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 yeah. very, like very, very, very unique. Because like you said, he came in looking for a goalie. So he happened to see something that you did mm -hmm. or, you know, the build that you have physically or yeah. how you played or a combination of all three. And he's like, hey, who is this kid? What's the deal? Yeah. Let me go find out. And that's what happened. And a lot of people think they're going to get scouted like that. It's not going to just happen because mm -hmm. one, you're not as good as you think you are. Two, the yeah. coach is looking for a specific position already, like you just mentioned. So for you to get scouted by this guy, you have to be, yes. for lack of a better word, a standout. Otherwise, they're not going to have interest in you. So it's, it's just a testament because, again, if he's coming in looking for a goalkeeper, you had to have done something or throughout the game or whatever where he's like, who is this kid? Where does he yeah. play? What's his story? You piqued his interest. And that, you know, again, for people watching or people that are going to watch this later, that does not happen no. very 
Yeah. Very often, it's like 1% chance. And that's because, again, they're already looking for positions and the chance of them seeing somebody, like, let me rephrase that this way. They saw Francesco and said, yeah. okay, he, he could probably fit at this school. That, and that's not happening happening a lot because they're coming in with specific needs yep. and they didn't know and didn't realize what was going on. So if I were you guys, I would be asking questions about this that are in the chat because that, that's huge, yeah. like to understand that process and why it happened. And then can you kind of touch base on like what, um, I mean, you also yep. played against, you said Stetson, you played against UCF. What did you see? Like, you know, for example, when you played Honestly, against UCF, like the level, that was the was first like? game that I ever played against at college. And I was very yeah. pleasantly surprised about the level. I didn't think the level in a way I knew it was a high level, after being in Europe, I was like, yeah. okay, it's something that I'd be accustomed to because I've, obviously I've played in Europe and I've played teams in, in, in Serie A. I've played against teams in Serie B as friendlies. And I was like, okay, so it'll be a little bit lower than that. But honestly, UCF really, really surprised me. Obviously, they have a lot of internationals, which favor. Yeah. Yeah. The whole but, starting um, 11 internationally. Yeah, yeah. The level they were yeah. just very built physically, very technical, very fast. Obviously, you've seen, you can see that they played together for a year or two, so they had to understand. I even saw some pa passes that they, that they were playing that they didn't even look at where the guy was, and they just hit the ball out of pure memory. So that just the connection, sure. the level, the chemistry, the coaches also were on, on the sideline, even though it was just, a, in a way, a preseason game that, in a way, could have made them think it's not really useful they still yeah. expected the very best from them and every little minute every little detail was corrected by coaches and by the by the players themselves it was just a very yeah yeah all internally driven yeah. so we have kevin frazier in the chat big time guy and he asked where are you I'm going to school currently in the process of finalizing things is california state university of bakersfield There we go. So, um, mm -hmm. and then let's see with college. And this is interesting because you and me have talked about this. Has the head coach person, actually ever seen no. you play? He's seen videos of me and I went there on a visit yeah. just to walk around, but he did not, and meet, and meet them, but he did not officially see me play in a game. <laughs> so again, guys, this just, again, highlights the fact of, um, one, you never know who's watching. Two, they don't even have to watch you live. Somebody, a friend could have seen them and said, hey, listen, check this kid out. You need to take him. And stuff like that happens all the time. Like when I went to, I went to college, I played Division II. Um, I played at a school called St. Leo, and this is in Florida. And interestingly enough, like this, again, this is 10 years ago. And our coach recruited three guys from France that he never saw live. He just saw video. So that kind of stuff happens all the time so you know you need to have video you need to have resources like that you need to be sending it out to people and again you never know who's going to watch and see what you what you got going on so um and then do you have any personal Obviously, targets now that you're going into college again, and caught in at the school and for the program and hopefully progress forward from college and make it into into the pros yeah i was getting an right. education right. and go. doing the best i can to bring the school to the highest level possible the program while I'm there, and yeah. then if things work out in after college, they do, and right. it all, it all, everything will happen for a reason. If it's meant to happen, it will. Yep. Make it happen. And then, um, what position they recruited are they, me as they a striker? For? But then the coach was talking about yeah. possible, but moving me also to other positions based on my video and based on all the positions that I told them about. Right. Well, I mean, even when you play for for our group, I mean, you've played three, four many positions, <laughs> <laughs> all of them, if not. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, it's something. And uh, can you highlight that? How important is it as a player? If you're a good player, you should be able to figure out how to play presi different positions. Is yes. that something you agree with? Is that if, something you? If you stick and why? with one position, in a way, yes, you get really good at a position. But if you play other positions, yeah. you can kind of understand what they're thinking in the moment. So if I'm playing left wing and I've right. never played center mid and the center mid from the right gets the ball and controls it and looks up and there's space in the back. 
if you don't understand one tactically what your team does and if you understand yeah. the position of a centerman what how they think you're never going to make that run towards the goal from the yeah. play over the top because if he controls it and looks up it's basically a very key sign that he's going to try to play you in behind but it's just a very same thing with a center right. back if a center back controls the ball and there's and the defense is really high up just tactically understanding and understanding the body language and the thinking process of other positions. If you see players are open, then you may wait a second and say, okay, he's faking this, but he's going to play here. So you understand what right. positions, how they're thinking, how you can move. Cause if you played it, you'd be like, okay, instead of that guy staying there, you needed, you should have done this. So you could have helped me mm -hmm. and I could have helped him. And he, and you would do the same right. thing once you play in that other position. Right, so it's yeah, it's awareness and positional understanding. Everything so, a little bit better. Yeah, and and so does, did your coach for the for the college? Did he give you like, hey, this is our targets, these are our goals? Has he talked about that yet, not, or is there any sort really. of? I mean, obviously, his target, yeah. like he told me when we were on the visit, was get back to the, the school back to the NCAA tournament. Obviously, do as best as possible. Yeah. But that's just that's just me. He, I mean, his this coach, uh, as, as he's talked, was very very keen on developing players, not just on the field, but also off the field as people. They're, they're very right. warm, uh, welcoming. They're very helpful. They're very just. They care about the person first, and then the the, the sports, the athletics. Now, what I want to do real quick is, guys, if you have any questions, there's some people asking questions. We're going to try and get them in a second. Um, so start slapping questions in right now in the, in the comments or wherever you want to put them so we can, we can get them answered, and uh, we'll, we'll get them answered. Mm -hmm. But before I forget, um, when you – like when you how – how do I phrase this? Like when you play – like, again, I think you have the – actually, let me phrase it this way. You have the level to be a pro in my opinion. So what I tell people is, okay – if, if you want to be a professional player, one, you have to have the physical build like Francesco. You have to have the technical level like Francesco. You have to have the tactical level like Francesco. Are there things you need to improve? Of course, everybody needs to improve. But they need to have a higher level than you. And what do you think, and it could be maybe a couple of things, but what do you think like made that switch? Like one, hey, I want to have this drive to do this. What, what in your the mind age, did that for you? What, what age was it? was 15. That was the first year I was in Italy which opened my eyes yeah. a lot because I was always, I was very, very I was always, I was here in the United States, I was always playing two years up to improve myself yeah. and try to be as competitive as possible and face better and bigger players so I could become better. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I, I mean, yes, in the United States, this was back 10 years ago now, almost 11 years, uh, nine years ago. Yeah. Obviously, U.S. soccer has improved mm -hmm. since then, but back then, I was just very, I was just very, very ball oriented. So I would always the ball, move wherever, get the ball, yeah. and always just moving around. And like you see now, I just move around all over the place and get the ball and just want to help yeah. the team as much as possible. And which, That's all you when I was thirteen. Oh, not 13. When I was younger, like 11, 12, I was always focused more on me than the team. So I was like, if I played well and we lost, I was like, okay, whatever. But now it's more, I'm more <laughs> team oriented because I want, I'd rather the team win and me play bad. i will be upset that I played bad because I want to play the best I can. But if the team win yeah. and all of us move forward, then just me move forward because in the end, if your team always loses, even you can play well, not really the, in a way, it's not really the best opportunity for you. You still could get seen, but I mean, it's not the yeah. it's not the greatest. But I've, at 15, yeah. thanks to the help of my father and my grandfather, because I was struggling a lot when I was with my first year in Italy, because I was low on confidence. I was doubting myself. I was everything, and my grandfather sat me down because it was right after my first um, trial with a team a pro team up north, I think. It was. Yeah. He, um, I got rejected and he, and I completely broke down because I felt like I was like, there was nowhere else I could go. I was like, I was 
soccer. My soccer stuff is done. Yeah, you're failing. After, and so yeah. my grandfather and my father both sat me down. And they were saying, this isn't the end. This is just a little curve in the path. You have to, you've seen what pro academies are about now. Because I was playing with the Palermo Academy, which was, it was, pro, it was technically a pro academy, yes, but very low in the pro academy ladder. And yeah. so I was very, I wasn't used to it. And so he was like, you've seen what it is about now. You see how hard they work. You see the technical ability. So, at, and after that is when I started seriously buying weights. I started doing extra on, on weekends. After on recovery days, I go around on the street of, of Palermo around my grandparents' building. I do a recovery jog. I on days I do like on off days I do like I said weights or a little bit of extra stuff just to just to keep just get ahead of the other of the competition. You know what I mean? Ever since right. it just stuck in my head. Whenever I catch, much. I'll still catch myself at yeah. times. Whatever, go like relaxing a little bit in a training session or just because just maybe it's one of those days it's a lighter training session but then i catch i catch myself and i said no that I, I you can't go through the motions and one you just gotta no matter what it is or how light the practice you just gotta great. keep going as yeah well that, that was gonna be my follow-up question to you how how did your dad have to push you? Was it your grandpa, and or was this kind of a self motivational piece? Them, yeah. Mainly my grandpa. Dad was still on calls and and yeah. everything. My grandfather was seriously the one. Ever since I was three, go to the field every Sunday, or I, every Sunday for sure. Then during the week, if we could sneak away to the field, we'd go. And my grandfather played in Italy when he was so he taught me all the European uh, technical stuff, all the basics, just getting shooting technique, getting just everything I needed, the base. So he was very, very important in my technical ability and just my entire soccer journey. I lived for a couple of years in Italy too when I was playing, so he was closer to me to, to help me. It was... It was both of them, but then at a certain point, they never pushed me too much. Like when I was, I was when I was little, I had a three month thing saying that I didn't want to play anymore, and they were like, "That's fine if you don't want to. We're not gonna we're not gonna force you." Then I obviously came I came back to them and said I wanted to play again, but it was it was more of a support than more rather than a push. The push was me, my own brain switching, saying I need to push myself as hard as possible every single day. Well, and here's what's interesting. So, um, you know, again, you're, you're very self-motivated, which is key because you can't like, obviously it helps to have a support system, but if, if the parent is pushing the kid yep. beyond what the kid wants, it's going to end at some point. Yep. But let, let's get to some questions. Oops. Um, I think just froze. Okay. So there's a bunch of questions. First one I see here, if you were to go back mm -hmm. to U13, U11 times, what team, what city, or what would you or what would be the place you think you would have grew better? When as I was U thirteen or U eleven, I was playing with. It had just recently formed Orlando City, Orlando City Youth Soccer. Orlando City was still USL. Yeah. Um, that helped me a lot because there was one. There was one coach in particular, Paul Shaw, who, in a way, helped me improve. He was one that told me initially to go play two years up. But I think if I had gone to mm -hmm. Italy at that age it would have been a lot easier to get into a pro academy and get built up from there just because of, like I said, yeah. U.S. soccer has improved now, but back then wasn't the greatest system. But I think, mm -hmm. I think if I had gone to Italy then, I would have had a lot better chance of making it into a pro, a high pro directly because yeah. at that age, right. a lot of people are just kind of like, there's not really too much difference between one and the other and so you find yeah so somebody asked here my son asked what was your first position my first and what is position your position now was right wing now my position is right wing striker mm -hmm. left wing the center attacking mid center mid left wing back right wing back left back right back <laughs> yeah so uh, i and i want to add one thing to that because again you just highlighted it 
you know, it's very yeah. important that players have versatility. Should of you course. have a, a position that you're probably the best in? Yeah. But, like, you, you, if yeah. you have the skills and the ability, you should be able to play multiple positions. Because even when I played college, I literally played every position also, but goalkeeper. Also very so, useful like, thing for coaches because it's they're scouting somebody and one guy can only play this position, yeah. can't be moved other places, and then they see yeah. you. Like, oh, he can play left, he can play wing, he can play midfield, he can play striker. That'll be more of a use for them, and they can be more, they'll be more interested in you because they'll say, one game we can play him here. If this guy gets or, or red card suspended, whatever, yeah. we can play here, and he can still be useful. Right. He'll still put in the work, and he'll still put in a, a high level performance. Cool. All right. So somebody asked the question again. I'm, what college are you to going to the California play? State University of Bakersfield? All right. And then a couple of questions as well. Somebody asks, is pasta and high carbs good yes. for players' performance? My opinion, yes, because it helps. Obviously, too much, no, because too much. But after, especially after me, when I don't eat it, and I, I work out like, like you said, I practice and work out once, uh, four times a week, five times a week, a time like double where I go practice and I go yeah. to the gym. And pasta, just because I grew up on it, helps me gain my energy back a lot quicker and helps me recover. And it gives me that energy level and that, that recharge that can help me keep going and keep pushing. Yeah. It's the performance piece. All right, next one. What did you say to the coaches you were contacting? Did you call I or email? email? That if you emailed, did they respond? And some responded, some didn't, which is what you're going to find. I emailed them my name, yep. my position, my age. I put together a, a soccer resume where I wherever where I've played in my high school and my high school achievements and and what and all my and my journey and adding a little bit about myself and why I was interested in the school. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And uh in terms of college recruiting guys, I have a free course you can get in my bio link where kind of walks you through college recruiting, so I recommend you do that ASAP if that's something you want to do. All right, we have a question here. How many days a week do you train and or how many hours of training when you were 16, 16 years old? I was old? training six times, uh, five times a week plus game, mm -hmm. and we had one recovery day, but we would train. Team training would be, again, five times a week for two hours, two and a half hours, whatever I did in the morning by myself. Yeah. My workouts were never more than an hour, an hour and 15, because I was also studying at the time to finish high school. So it was, I'd say, yeah. a day around maximum four hours, but no less than three. Gotcha. All right. And I'm 20 Francesco, and going to turn 21 in July. 20, going to turn 21 in July. We have another question that says, do you watch pro games to learn from your position or – get something from I what you do watch. I watch a lot of pro games and I do watch so if I if the game that I'm watching I know there's someone like for example my team is, is Juventus I watch Chiesa a lot because I watch his movements and I watch how much he sacrifices to the team and when mm -hmm. ball, when, wherever the ball is to see what his position is or now that I'm playing a little bit more center mid I'll watch center mids kind of like I say more like, kind of like Gavi and Pedro and Pedri because they're a little bit more dynamic and they're more over, all over the place. And, um, but there will be games that I watch just to enjoy and not focus on a position. But then there are some games, if, like I said, depending right. on the player, I'll watch that player and see where he is in position of the ball, which in my opinion, at times is, is, is useful. And at times it cannot be useful because if, for example, Roma, Dybala, Jose Mourinho has him play a certain way. Then I go to my team and my coach has – I play the same position as Dybala. My coach has me do, do something else. I mean, yes, you get stuff from Dybala because you don't always – in a way, it sounds bad, but you don't always listen to the coach. You – tactics yeah. are – a tactical position formation are there just as a base so you know kind of have an idea. If there's a moment that you need to do something on your own out of your own mind and idea, Yes, and it works out. You do it, you do it because 
I mean, you got to have your own personality too in there. You have your own character to do your own play. Yeah. So here's a good question. When you speak mm -hmm. of differences between European youth soccer, U12 and US, so he's, uh, I guess the question is, can you speak of some differences that you see between U12, European well, soccer, or football U12, in the US? It was a lot of small sided games, possession, and just like passing sequences. U12 over there, they do very few games. Really like a game, game at the end of the practice just to let them play it. But most of the practice yeah. is all cones, dribbling, technique, and just getting, a, getting comfortable with the ball to be able to stay on the ball and not panic when you have it. Right. There you go. Boom. So developing players. All right. So question here. Did – you get scouted to D1 straight from high school or from a club match? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> I did not get scouted from high school because high school, my high school, my junior, sophomore, junior, and senior year, I was playing in Italy. And then a club, I didn't, the club match, I mean, I was in a game, but it wasn't a club match. It was against Stetson again, like we said, but that with Stephen Murray, his group, his organization. And he was, the friend of the coach was in the stands and saw me play and, and, and I'll, I'll kind of explain that in further detail. So basically, Francesco's a 20-year-old, right? So he went uh, to Italy, 19, came back at no, 20, right? 20, said, yeah. Yeah, so then he went to OCB, Orlando City. Uh, he was at Orlando City with OCB and the first team. Um, and then after that, he finished the season, and he ended up working with me and whatnot. There was a guy that I knew that came from Ireland um, who was doing, like, a college – I don't know how to explain it better, but like a college visit where they were playing a bunch of universities yeah. and he got scouted from that. So he did not get scouted from high school or from no. a club match in the sense of what you're talking about. Well, we can kind of explain that later in further detail. So uh, another question. Same my height person, is, what is your height six and, one, weight? and my weight is 180. Mm -hmm. There you go. Boom. All right. So then I have another question. How do you get noticed by your coach? Just to play more minutes in working your hard in practice, being always having a good attitude, never show like even if you're not playing, don't be negative, don't be just showing that you don't, don't want like you're you're upset about it. Just keep work. Obviously, the coach will know you're upset. Not playing minutes is everyone wants to play, but just work hard in practice. Be a good teammate. Don't argue with teammates in a way. Be constructive. Be helpful. Just keep yeah. working and. Just do, do everything the best you can and focus on on your performance. Yep. All the work, right? All you can do is prove the guy wrong. Um, and then another question. With all the positions you play, which do you prefer? I, I, you tell that to I prefer coach? left or right wing. And, yes, I have told coaches when they've changed me a uh, position. I said, I, I can play there. You just got to explain it to me a little bit. And I said, my natural position is this, so you got to kind of – guide me the first couple days but there's no there's no harm in learning other positions maybe you could find another position that you're better at so all right and then somebody said what's your plan with the game where do you see your I, future honestly i see my future i hope i see my future i hope that it works is uh making it out of college into pro just yeah that's my goal. Just keep working there every go. day for that. That's, that's it. Another question. Uh, well, he's got to go in a couple of minutes, guys. So we're going to wrap it up. So get your final questions if you got any. Uh, when you trained yourself, what kind of exercises you picked or from where? I do not have any videos about? of exercises I was doing, but I would do – I had my weights. I would do arms. I would do shoulders. I would do chest. I would do back. I'd do, like, in a way, I'd lay down on the ground. I'd do kind of – Pressing away, I yeah. do overhead press. I do biceps. I do triceps. The weights, I do just I do uh, core work. I do planks, is all those stuff you can find. I used I just I used to go online and say like sort of exercises for specific muscles. For my legs, I do squats holding the the weights. I do Bulgarian split squats yep. on one leg with the weights. I do wall sits. I do lunges. I do squat jumps. I do hamstring 
holding the ham. I forgot. I don't know what the name of it is, but someone holds your heels and you forward slowly as, as far as possible uh, as possible for your hamstrings. And then when you can't, you let yourself fall to the ground and then go back up. Yeah. Build core strength. Yeah. All right. Uh, probably the last two or three questions. At what age do you feel is appropriate to start training for football? That's kind of an open-ended question. Whenever I started, try and answer that. Or ever since, honestly, actual training with a team, I started when I was four, with just educational thing. But ever, but when I was little, ever since I could walk, me and my dad would kick around the ball. Like when I was one, we'd go out. I'd kick the ball to him. And just yeah. whenever. When Ever get them touches in. You feel yeah. like you okay. need it whenever you want to start. There's no right or wrong time. Right. And then let's see here. Another question. How old were you when you got oh, scouted? Oh, I, was, I, I already turned 20, so I was 20. And then last question that I'm seeing. Do you think beginning at a D2 college and I think so. is a viable option? I have a lot of friends that, have, that did that. Obviously, you got to perform. You got to be the best Based almost, well, not almost, basically at week in, week out. All training, I was performing yep. in games. And then you just got to you gotta get yourself seen. You got to play, and you got to be the best show uh, week in, week out. And opportunities will come, no matter where you're playing. Yeah. So, like, like, and the thing that I'll add to that is, it doesn't even matter the level, right? So, like, you always have yep. to you have to stand out for people to notice you. If you're not standing out, people are not going to notice you. You might be a good technical player and, or really smart or whatever, but if you're not standing out on the field in some way, yeah. scoring goals, creating assists, penetration, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever it is, defending, then you're not going to get noticed. And I, again, that, that's a testament to what Francesco did. Cause again, there was a guy watching for a goalkeeper and Francesco stood out in his mind. And he said, Hey, let me make a recommendation. Let's find out what's going on. And boom. So anyways, bro, I know you got to run. I don't want to keep you much longer. And um, I guys, I, like I said, with the other videos, I made a mistake. I'm going to post this on the normal feed so you guys can rewatch it. And hopefully you learned something from it. And uh, we're here to help answer questions and get you guys better, man. So that's it. You guys stay safe. Hey, thank you. And uh, Francesco, you day, bro. thanks so much. Bye. Yes, sir. I'll see you later, man. All right, so, yeah, guys, keep that in the back of your mind if you're still in here. Uh, Francesco's a great guy, played good level, different areas, and uh, is now going NCAA D1. I hope that makes sense, hope that helps. Hope you learned something. Um, and you – to to play, bro, you got to stand out. And to be – to to play at a level like he has, and I say this all the time for the kids that work with us, you have to be better than him. He's physically super fit, super strong, built very well like an athlete, Technically very, very good. Technically good. So, I mean, those are things that if you want to reach the level higher than him, you have to be better than what he has. And that way you can have the platform to do it. So that's very, very important. And he's a guy going into D1. And, and the last thing I want to add to that, we didn't really talk about it too much, is a lot of people think that they need to go to college right when they graduate. You can always go back to college. Like, again, he was in Italy. He came back at the end of his 19th year to turning 20, played with Orlando City. Orlando City B in the first team, and then, boom, got in to go to college. So at 20 years old, about to be 21. So he's going to go into college at 21 years old. That's fine. You can do that. You don't have to – don't stress about going to college right away. Yeah, is it great? Sure. But remember, they're picking up guys like Francesco that have that experience. So really, really important to think about. So anyways, man, that's it. My my giveaway ends tomorrow if you want to win. Hashtag you soccer is spit on, on – uh, the feeds that I or the posts and reels that I make, and uh, we got more lives coming. So stay tuned. I'll be doing more individually. I'll be doing more with people, and uh, he'll be making the work in, or we'll be putting the work in. So uh, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's in California. Uh, it's a very, very good school. So stay tuned, guys. See you guys later. Have a good day. And.